Right, now we're on to proving theorem 4. Theorem 4 has an asterisk next to it, so theorem 4a has a proof which is examinable in an exam. Now what does theorem 4a say? Theorem 4a says if you have angles which are subtended by a chord or an arc. Now what this means is if you have an arc, AD, or you can think of it as chord AD, if these two subtend angles at the circumference of the circle on the same side of the chord, these angles are equal. Now what does that mean? If you look at chord AD, it subtends angle B at the circumference. It also subtends angle C at the circumference. Now this theorem says that in this case, angle B and angle C will be equal. Another way to say this is angles in the same segment are equal. Let's have a look at the proof. First of all, you are given circle with center O and chord AD subtends ABD and ACD. We are trying to prove that this ABD and this ACD at the circumference are equal. Our construction is going to be our radii OA and OD. Now what this picture should now jog your memory is that it should remind you of theorem 2. So what's our proof? Well angle OAD in the center of the circle must be equal to twice angle ABD at the circumference of the circle because theorem 2 said that the angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. But AD also subtends angle C at the circumference. So AOD must be equal to 2 ACD at the circumference for exactly the same reason. But this means we have two expressions for the same angle. Angle AOD is the subject of this expression in both these cases. So the things that they are equal to must be equal to each other. So we can conclude that if OAD is the same thing as itself, 2ABD and 2ACD must be equal. Now if we treat this like an equation and we divide by 2 on both sides, it means that ABD must equal to ACD, which is exactly what we were trying to prove. Now our reason we're going to use when we see these angles is we say angles in the same segment. Now we often call these angles butterfly angles because it helps us remember this pattern. These two triangles look like the wings of butterflies. So often in class we'll call these butterfly angles, but we must remember the important reason is angles in the same segment. Let's practice an example. This example says determine the values of x and y giving reasons. O is the center of the circle. Well, the first thing I saw when I saw this was this idea of butterfly angles. And butterfly angles mean that the two angles at the circumference are equal. So I can already know that angle A at the circumference is the same as X, which means if I can find angle A, I know what X is. Now, finding angle A is easy. Angle DAC is 48 degrees. Now, I got that from taking 180 and subtracting my 132 degrees because they are adjacent angles on a straight line. Now that means I'm pretty much done, because that means that x must be 48, because x and this angle A are angles in the same segment. Now in order to find y in this question, y is related to either of these x's, because y is the angle at the center, and dc subtends x at the circumference. So I know that y will be double x, which is 48 degrees. And reason from theorem number 2 Angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. Let's have a look at theorem 4b. Theorem 4b is the exact converse of theorem 4a. In fact, it says the exact opposite. What it says is if you have a line segment that does subtend equal angles, so it's given you the angles are equal, then if you know these angles are on the same side of the line segment, these four angles must be on the circumference of a circle. Now a word for this is we say that these four, four points are concyclic. So what this means is if you're given two angles equal on the same side of AD, a circle can be drawn all the way around going through A, B, C, and D. Now a word for this quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, is a cyclic quadrilateral. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral where the four corners lie on the circumference of a circle. Now the reason we're going to use when we quote theorem 4b 
is we have a line segment subtending equal angles on the same side. And this is in fact the first of three ways to prove that a quadrilateral is a cyclic quad. You do not have to know the proof of this, only of theorem 4a. Let's have a look at an example. It says that prove that PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now again, as soon as I saw this, I saw my butterfly angles. And I know that if my butterfly angles are equal, my quad is cyclic, which means a circle can pass through P, Q, R, and S. Now, I need to therefore show that angle S is 50 degrees. Well, this isn't a problem, because immediately I see that angle M1 and 110 degrees lie on a straight line. This means that angle M1 must be 70 degrees, because of adjacent angles on a straight line. Similarly, angle R1 and 120 degrees lie on a straight line. So this means that angle R1 is 60 degrees for the same reason. Now this means I have two angles in the triangle. Therefore, I can find the value of S. I did a quick calculation in my head, and 180 degrees minus the 70 and the 60 gives me 50 degrees. And my reason, sum of angles in a triangle. Now this is great, because this means that angle P and angle S are equal. Which means, according to theorem 4b, PQRS is a cyclic quad. And my reason, line segments subtends equal angles on the same side. So those are theorems 4a and 4b. As I said, 4a's proof is examinable, and these two theorems play a very important role in this section. Now along with theorem 4 come a whole bunch of corollaries. Now corollaries are side effects of a theorem. There are four corollaries of theorem 4, and um, to be honest, I've never seen these corollaries assessed in an exam. So while I'm going to show them to you and give you the reasons here, there's no need to stress about remembering these as I've never seen them being examined. They're quite simple though. The first one says if you're given equal chords, then they will subtend equal angles at the circumference. So if you have any two chords that are equal, the angle that they subtend on the circumference are also equal. Our reason being, equal chords subtend equal angles at circumference. Our next corollary is fairly similar. It says if you have equal chords, then they will subtend equal angles at the center. So it's fairly similar to the last one. Our reason is exactly the same. Equal chords subtend equal angles, but at this time it says at center. Our third corollary says the following. If we're given equal angles at the circumference or at the center, and I haven't put the picture here at the center, I've put in the picture with the angles at the circumference. So if we're told they're equal, then we may assume that the chords are equal. So it's almost exactly the converse of the first two corollaries. And our reason being if we need to use this is we have equal angles subtended by equal chords. Our last corollary says, if we have equal chords in two different circles, but these circles have equal radii, so basically they're exactly the same circle with exactly the same length of chord, then the angles they subtend at the circumference are also equal. Our reason here is equal chords, equal radii, equal angles. As I've said, these corollaries are not that important. However, theorem 4a and 4b are very, very important, so make sure that you spend lots of time on them.